you know, Prajita, from the girl next door, you've managed to become the girl on every alternate digital screen. Thanks to the fabulous content that you put out. We totally love your videos. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. You made it. None of y'all drowned, <laughs> which is great. I barely made it. You know, Project, every time I search, I, you know, I key in your name on Google, it throws up some fabulous results. It says, uh, you know, what is Prajakta Kohli's net worth? How much does she earn per month? You know, in 2000... What, is, what does it say? I, I'm not telling you that. You, you can tell us that now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not getting... I have guesses. so <laughs> slow with numbers in general. I will... I, I, and I don't... I wish I was saying this to just sound how... I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue. I don't even know how you... Calculate net worth. <laughs> I don't even know. But you know, back in 2015 when you started off, did you ever feel that the country would be second guessing your income maybe eight years later and influencer marketing would become such a big area? No, not at all. When I started off, I, it, was, it was such a blind decision for me and that was very unlike me because I was always the kid who wanted to know exactly what she's doing, what is the plan going forward, how is it going to be. So for me, starting a job, which I have absolutely no clue about, was a huge thing. But I just started having so much fun, luckily, that the first few months of being a creator, I didn't even stop and breathe and think about, oh, like, where is this going or how is it going to be? And I still feel that hasn't changed. I'm very happy that I started when I started and I'm here where I am. But honestly, if you ask me where do I see this going in the next five years, I have no clue. I, I, I'm as clueless about that as I was before. I just know that I, um, I, I love it and I wouldn't want to do anything else. You know, but what was your earliest challenge as a content creator? You, you know, you were an RJ who actually took a leap of faith into this very little known profession back then. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge for you and where did you stand out according to you? The biggest challenge for me uh, actually came about and I don't, I don't, um, I'm not saying this to sound like I had my life together when I started as a creator. I genuinely was having so much fun creating content the first few months, over a year actually. Uh, my first challenge really came fo forward when I had my first content block. And I was not expecting that. I genuinely thought that ah, if you're a content creator, that's what you do. Uh, so, how do you deal with content blocks? So, that was my first big challenge is how to stay consistent, how to keep churning out content. I was doing three videos a week at that point. Um, and that was when it got really, really scary. But uh, I got through it. I mean, uh, I kept creating content and I told myself that it's fine, let all the bad content get out and that's when the good one will come. So, when my videos don't work, I'm like, it's just a phase, I'll get over it. But uh, there's no other way of also learning that, I think. It was a rite of passage that every creator goes through. You know, would you say you had the first more advantage back then, you know, that, you know, guaranteed followers, loyalty even today? And, uh, or would you say instead that, you know, it's, it's a bigger challenge because you have to make sure that, you know, in the past eight years, the kind of content you created, you don't repeat that, which is not a challenge for the new people on the blog. How is that not a challenge for the new people on the blog? Because they've just come up, so it's... They but they, their 2015 will start now. So eight years down the line, we'll talk to them about how they can't uh, repeat it. But um, I don't... And again, unpopular opinion, but I don't think that it was any easier back then or any tougher back then than it is right now. It's exactly the same. I mean, uh, the economy has grown bigger, uh, but so have the number of creators. So I just feel like it's also become a little more legitimate at this point. You know, where uh, I think them, if I had started today, I might even have like a fair idea of what the map was going to be. Um, but the creators who are starting today have different challenges where you have to kind of uh, make your mark in a market that's already extremely populated. So I just feel like... Uh, the challenges have changed, but I don't think it's any less easier or tougher right now than it was when I started. Okay, now let's come to brands because we have a lot of marketers in the audience. Uh, what is the dif biggest difference when you create content for engagement with your followers and one which is obviously sponsored by brands? What is the biggest difference? For you. There's a the lot of process. back and forth with the scripts. 
that is a huge difference also uh, for someone like me i'm not when i'm making content i don't really follow a script to the t i like to improvise when i'm shooting so that is that becomes a little tough for me every time there's a brand involved but touchwood i've been very uh, um fortunate that in the past 8 years all the brand collabs 99% of the brand collabs that i have done have been extremely collaborative and i've had the pleasure of working with the most understanding most uh open to try new things and meeting me midway kind of brands and i think that is very empowering to a creator so um yeah i think that was that is a challenge for sure and the scripting of it and we'd also like to know about your first ever brand promotion my first ever brand promotion was uh i did a five video deal with yatra.com there were five sketches that i did and i was so surprised that a brand like yatra had actually uh, and i think i was at i i'd started off a little over a year ago no a little less than a year ago i think i uh, i started off in the feb of 2015 and this went through in the jan of 26 i spat jan of 2016 um and that was my first collab and i remember till then we were getting all these like um, incoming inquiry like inquiries were coming to us where they were like hey if you t- uh, tweet about us or if you put a uh, story about us, not a story we didn't have stories then but if you put a post about us we'll give you a bag and i was like oh my god guys this is great i get a free bag and my team was like calm down you can afford a bag and i was like yeah but like it's free and it's just one post and that's when i remember my team sitting me down and telling me that this is real estate okay this is extremely valuable space that you are working very we are all working very hard to build so you can't just give it away you need to know your worth with it and if if it's a conversation it has to be uh, lucrative on both sides and i was like fine whatever so i remember when the first uh, yatra deal happened i was just like how much are they paying me Are you sure? Is that how many numbers, like zeros, there are in it? I, I was very, I was genuinely surprised. Not in my wildest dream had I thought that that was the kind of money brands would be um, willing to bet on a creator like me. But at that point, did they micromanage you a lot? Not Because really. Your first. Not really. No, I remember having a great experience with them. I remember they were very open. I was also because it was my first. I we were. I was kind of working with them to understand how it really works. So I was open to a, their feedback, which was constructive. Uh, they were open to what I had to say about uh, what I knew of my what could fly with my audience, what couldn't. And I think the one thing that we both agreed on was that we didn't want it to be a sly. Pitch. like we didn't want it to be like oh like let me just book it on yatra.com like you know uh, it wasn't that it was it was a proper um collab which i was upfront about it and they wanted me to be there so i feel like as long as the basic communication between brands and creators are through it's great yeah i i don't mind brand collabs and i don't just mean it for the money i make i'm just <laughs> saying in general it's nice to meet different people who get different perspective for um different products like for me i did this one uh thing with cadbury and it was extremely special for me because uh, I, I, my father used to work in cadbury when i was really really young and uh, so it was a huge deal for me um so i i mean i'm also coming from a place where i like i want to work with more people so it's it's fun you know cut to many years later when was when was his yatra deal exactly the year 2016 2016 yeah wow now now if you were to look at it now uh, if i had to talk about the journey you know from conceptualization to actually putting out that video what which are the different stakeholders does somebody help you with content how much time does it take to put forward that particular piece on internet and how much freedom do you get now that you're a known face in the industry and you can pull it off Uh, I actually am more spoiled now than I was before. I remember those five videos I wrote by myself, shot by myself. Uh, I had my editors working with me at that time, and I took a lot of pride in the fact that you know I've got it. I've done five. Are you okay? Are you fine? Okay. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> um. So. Um, uh, so yeah, I had a lot of help. Uh, no, I had no help. I did it by myself, and I'm sorry. um but now when i do it i have a team of writers that i sit down with i'll brainstorm with so i feel like i'm a little more spoiled now and if i was thrown back into how i was making content in 2016 i would have a tough time finding my feet again okay and and tell us about the strangest brand request that you've ever received 
and how you actually <laughs> made that work. Example. Can you I want to hear the whole thing? <laughs> oh my God! If they hear it, they're gonna hate on me. Okay, I won't obviously take the brand name, but I once wrote a script, and I wish I could tell you that, guys, this does not leave the room, but we are live. But um, so I once wrote a script where <laughs> my father's character says, "Why have you made Palak?" Okay, it was. and it was a joke on palak so i got i got feedback from the brand saying and i quote we don't want to offend palak <laughs> and i was like i'm sorry are you in touch with him <laughs> do you know him personally can i talk to him and get it so it's a, and i remember say, and i thought they were joking because i remember sitting down with the team and i was just like like what do you say to feedback like that that was the most ridiculous i remove the joke i couldn't fight i had no ammo to i had no clue what to say i don't know how to <laughs> reply to someone who says no no, no we don't want to hurt the feelings of palak and then they're like no, no no like we don't want to hurt feelings of vegetarians and i was just like okay so then i took a step back but that was by far the the funniest and one of the, my most memorable conversations with the brand i don't even think it was a brand actually it was the agency yeah I don't think it was even true to the brand. It was the agency that was kind of so it was uh, funny. It makes a good anecdote. And you know, this is this is a huge responsibility when you're actually doing brand promotions and you know, directing directly connecting uh, with the audience through your own platform in a way. Uh, when did you really think that people were actually looking up, taking notice, and actually buying the brand that you really wanted? them to buy you know what kind of response what kind of feedback made you realize that i think i realized the impact of my social media channels way before i started uh, really doing brand deals more frequently okay. and i think that learning about that impact was also what gave me the confidence of doing more brand deals because uh when you start off it's a very scary thing you know you always feel like because as as creators like me like the way i started i think we um base so much of our content on the relatability of it where we are shooting in our pajamas in our bedroom and that's that and suddenly where there's a brand involved it becomes tricky for us also to kind of um um uh, believe that okay people will believe what we're trying to tell them you know or people will really believe when i tell them that i use this brand uh, so but but the first time i felt like i had impact was when i started making con i put a video out about uh, mental health and body positivity and um, I put out an email say email ID saying you know if you want I won't be reading these emails and I won't be but if you want to just let out you have an email you can use like just put it out and it was a small activity that I did back in 2015 I think and at that time getting more than 800 emails was a huge deal for me and that's when I realized for the first time that oh they are speaking back to me you know it's a conversation it's not just me speaking at them I'm speaking to them and I think that makes a huge so that, that is also what gave me the confidence to want to do brand deals i think yeah and now that you're an established name i repeat uh, how does this work this brand ecosystem work for you you know are you still approaching brands for the deals or you mostly declining i have just too much work i can't be oh, doing no, all of this no 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 not at all <laughs> um i mean this is my job this is what pays my bills this is what i wake up every day and do and uh, i i just happen to be in this very fortunate place in life where what i do for a living is also what i absolutely am passionate about uh, the fact that i get to wake up every day write shoot edit be an actor be a writer be a content creator is just i i understand my place of privilege because i love every part of my job except editing i hate editing i'm very grateful for my editors but everything else i love uh but having said that i uh, there is still a system in place where obviously uh, i i work with one digital entertainment and they have a very efficient sales team that is pitching me for different things also i'm uh, i have also reached a point where i'm now writing content uh, that i can sell where i want to make i want to go ahead from the weekly videos that i was doing and maybe make like a six episode show but i'm going to need money for it i need people to give me money so i can produce a slightly bigger show uh for my channel so i'm actually also particularly writing content which is up for sale where we are trying to pitch it 
to different brands and different platforms that, hey, do you want to come as a come on board as a sponsor and this is what we can do. Uh, a very new thing I've started with brands is that when I write a piece of content that I think could be sellable, is that a word? Yeah, on for sale, <laughs> I will make a list of brands that I think might work as easy fits that might just be a natural integration into the content and then I, I send it to the sales team and I'm like, can we try reaching out to these brands? Uh, and that, that's how it happens. But we're also very fortunate that we have inquiries that keep coming in. So it's both ways, I think. And also, would you say today there's a lot more pressure on influencers? I think CCPA had, uh, you know, said that they would impose a huge fine on endorsers if uh, they make false claims. Yeah. So what are the kind of checks that you carry out from your side to make sure that nothing is amiss? So one of the things that, um, so I, again, I'm very happy that I started off with a team of people like One Digital got me to the platform. Sudeep who's from One Digital actually picked me up, he met me at the radio station and he's like, here's my card and you should be a YouTuber and I think you have something. So I was very lucky to start off with people who had already worked in this digital marketing it, uh, uh, industry for much longer than I, before I came. So they had actually briefed me on all of these things where they were like, you have to be responsible for every word that comes out of your mouth. That he helped me understand how audiences, uh, how, how I'm, I should, I had expected hate because that was the, what the pattern of, uh, that is what the pattern of the internet is. So that helped me get over trolls and hate and unnecessary, like not criticism, but like unnecessary hate that doesn't, it's not really helpful. Same way, uh, speaking about social issues, this was, I, I was, made to sit down and understand that this is how you can tackle things that you're passionate about. Uh, so, and the same with brands. So honestly for me, responsibly speaking and putting out everything has always been a filter way before brands came in. And that just simplifies a lot. As long as I, I know and I am accountable uh, to everything that I say and uh, kind of endorse, I think we should be fine. So as long as, and again, it, it differs from creator to creator. So as long as you have these filters on yourself, uh, I think it works well for me. Yeah, because we see a lot of these uh, videos that talk about, you know, how a brand is got extra sugar in its... Uh, a brand has got? Extra sugar. I mean, the sugar, this, uh, and I mean, sugar-free is not good. For oh, example. like that. I didn't want to take names, but... Oh. A lot of uh, that kind of content, yeah. you know, which, which is also coming out. So yeah. if you're endorsing something yeah. like that, yeah. are you actually going deep down and researching about the ingredients I am. Yes. and all of yes. that? Yes, yes, yes. I am that. Uh, also, uh, again, I'm very fortunate to have a team that does it for me very efficiently. We will also go and look if the opinions expressed by the brand also align with what I've been working for so long. Uh, like for example, there are some brands uh, that are great to work with. I've heard really, really good um, things about them and how working with them is easier. But if the communication includes anything, for, for example, let's say skincare brands, and if the communication includes brightening or you know, all of that, that is never something, I have nothing against them, but that is not something I will ever come on board with because I have worked too hard speaking about body positivity and accepting yourself and things like that. So I, I feel like, like I said, as long as I know exactly which direction I want to take mostly sane in, I think that just filters everything else out. You know, also the government has made it mandatory for influencers to, you know, specify sponsored content whenever they put out a brand endorsement. Now, has that made things for a, difficult for an influencer? Because earlier when you started off, it was mostly like this, this friend I have on the internet who's telling me what to use, what not to use, recommending it from the, you know, the truest part of her heart. Mm. And now when I see that sponsored content, I know she's getting paid for it. Mm. Like, uh, it's difficult for me to believe that person. So how, how do you think that is panning out for an influencer? Uh, I genuinely think it's better when you have the sponsorship tag on. That way, you as a consumer also know what you're watching. I mean, uh, I remember when, uh, when I started off, there were so, and also the audience is really smart. As time passes, our audience right now is extremely smart. They are very intelligent. They know exactly what they're spending their time and money on. So in, in 2023, sitting back and thinking, oh, I'll slyly put this in my content and it'll fly. It's not going to. If anything, it's going to be a question on your credibility as a creator. I personally like that it's an upfront paid partnership tag that goes that way. Your audience knows what's going on. But having said that, I think one of the things that 
works in our favor as creators, and at least I'll speak for myself, is that I know I will take, like I said, I, I know I will take responsibility for what I'm endorsing. Like for example, I have a lovely relationship with Gillette for the past three years. We just renewed again. I'm very, very happy. But that was such a seamless integration because way before Gillette came to me, I was already speaking about hair removal and how I've been using Gillette for a long time and it wasn't a branded thing. So again, a seamless kind of fit in my everyday life anyway. So I think when it comes to doing this, as long as you find the right fit for your content and for your audience, I don't think the paid partnership tag is an issue. And even another thing is, uh, is it tougher for influencers who are into niche content uh, you know, compared to someone who's into the broader categories like you. Um, just, just to give you an example, you know, I'm hooked on to content for taming my curly hair. <laughs> and I see the same influencers talk about maybe what True Frog, about Anvea, Fix My Curls, Curlwana, Curlwana everything. Every, it's the same influencer. These are brands or these are influencers? These are brands. brands okay. And there are influencers talking about these each brands. of them. Every okay. day they would come up with a new brand and they have, of course, paid sponsorship. How do I trust them? Where is the credibility there then? Is that a gray area according to you, you know, where the same influencer in a niche area is literally talking about everything under but, the sun? But is, suppose, suppose an influencer is talking, uh, suppose a creator is talking about how to take care of your curly hair. Is every post sponsored? Most of it is sponsored. Now oh That's exactly boy. what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. I do not know how to answer that question. <laughs> I'll be honest because... I, for me, uh, that is again an, a very conscious choice where I need my audience to believe that I genuinely am. And I think that is where long-term contracts with brands work better in favor of the creators, the credibility of the brand and of the relationship with the creator. Uh, I really don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to think about that one. You know, there, there was also this time when, uh, you know, when you had to establish yourself in Bollywood or, uh, you know, have a strong, you know, background in television to land yourself an endorsement deal. Uh, now, it's, it's sort of the reverse, you know, where you can actually start with, you know, great, having great content, an endorsement will follow, and then maybe you kind of get that break in, you know, uh, in movies. Like, it's happening with you. I mean, you, I mean, there was mismatched, of course, and there is uh, Niyat that just came out. Um, would you say, uh, whatever the clout of social media influencers, being on the silver screen would actually give you a leg up with the new age uh, audience or do they not really care about the traditional mediums today? You know, I think that I, I couldn't have become an actor and a creator at a, be creator at a better time because thanks to OTT, thanks to YouTube, thanks to other streaming platforms that we have. At this point, it's become a pool of content. And audience ke haat mein, ki aapne kaise kya dekhna hai, kaise dekhna hai. At this point, if you see, I don't think we are really judging a piece of content based on where it's coming out. If it's good, people will go to watch it in the theaters. And if it's not, then you could put all the marketing in it, you could have the biggest people, you could have the fanciest names and it wouldn't even work for free on YouTube. So I think at this point, what the audience only cares about is content, which it should also, because it's a great time to be a creator, it's a great time to be a part of stories uh, that no matter what the platform work. So um, a lot in that dynamic has changed, definitely. I mean, in the past especially after the whole digital boom we've had in the country. I think India has completely changed. And I feel so proud when I travel and I go to different countries and everybody talks to me about, oh my God, you come from the biggest digital market in the world at this point. Uh, so I understand that everybody's eyes are on us. I understand that we are kind of taking this monster with us everywhere we go. Um, um, but it's great. I mean, I think the audience is becoming, definitely becoming more... Uh, aware of the choices that they're making with their content and I don't think they are any more uh, inclined towards silver screen as they are towards OTT. Interesting. We'd love to open up, uh, I mean we'd love to have the audience ask you a few questions. I'm sure they are ready to go. Can oh, we please God. pass on This the is mic? always such an awkward time <laughs> when you open it up and then you, I'm just like waiting. What if nobody <laughs> raises their hand? Thank oh, yeah, you. Right Should we That's give you one? No, 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 Project, that's okay. We'll get someone to pass it on, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. 
Kanchan, of course, uh, one of our editors, so we're going to give it to her. Kanchan? Prajakta, you mentioned that uh, you used to get, you know, lot of offers to post something and then in they offered of. you to ha, give ha, free bags and all, but your team used to guide you, you know, don't do that. So I was just wondering, I mean, you had just started. So how big your team was then and how did it work? I mean, it, you did not have any collaboration by then. So how could you afford a team then? Oh, uh, so One Digital, like I said, One Digital actually got me to the platform. I remember when I had my first meeting with One Digital, I thought I'm interviewing to become a YouTuber. <laughs> I thought it's a job that they will pay me every month for. And that, that's how clueless I was about this entire life. And they were like, no, no, no. You, you do it and we help you and then the whole contract was explained to me, everything that went on forward. Um, so that's where the guidance came. And how I could afford to have a team is that um, because it was a sharing thing, it was not like I was paying them anything out of my pocket. Whatever we would earn, we would share. And also, I think big ups to my parents because I remember going to my parents and telling them that, you know, I have uh, worked in radio for a year for someone else. I wasn't making any money then also. But uh, I said, you know, maybe I'll work for myself for a year and see if I can make enough money. And my parents were like, we are both working. You don't need to worry about that. So if they had not shown that confidence in me, I wouldn't have the guts to actually work without expectations of pay till my first deal happened. Uh, and it was very important for me to do that first deal because that's what also gave me the confidence that okay, there is money and it takes some time for this profession to get the money ball rolling. But when it does, it's, I mean, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we get the mic pass? Thanks, Kanchan. Hi, my name is Pramod. I run a digital agency. Hi, my Pramod. Hi. My question is, uh, since you are one of the pioneers in your segment, uh, if you could enlighten us uh, how digital agencies can play a role in uh, making this influencer game uh, go bigger and better. Uh, to be more uh, precise with my question, or to explain this more, uh, if, if I was looking at uh, uh, creating a pool of influencers, uh, in you know, just the way One Digital did for you, seven, eight One years One Digital back. is, yeah, One Digital is a partner manager and a multi-channel Correct. Network. So, uh, is, is this a pattern which other agencies are already following, uh, con getting into a contract with uh, upcoming influencer and then uh, doing something together? I mean, I think so. Um, but uh, honestly, if you want, I can put you in touch with Sudeep or Gurpreet who work with One Digital and they can actually help you understand this better because they do that part of the film. I'll, I I'll truly appreciate that because <laughs> that, that could be oh one yeah, of for my sure, take for away. Sure. They'll, have uh, a, they'll, have, they'll be the right people to answer this. If you Thank could you. just maybe after just give me an email ID and I'll put you in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Pramod. Thank you. Hi, Project. Sorry. Kya Hello. Act? Oh, okay, right there on the left. Kya acting kari hai aapne niyat mein? Oh, thank you, sir. Super. <laughs> you know, till till <laughs> till, till, so till half the time, me and my daughter are like, you are the murderer. Hashtag fan moment at E4M I dark. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said hashtag fan moment at E4M. <laughs> yes, yes. Till <laughs> half the time, sir. we were thinking that you are the murderer. Ah. <laughs> so many people are like, you look too innocent. That is yeah. why we thought you are the murderer. I said, are you? So but how was how was it from uh, uh, moving to movies really from from uh, from the uh, world of creator oh, and all that? It's surreal. You know? Honestly, I didn't even think these doors would open up for me. मैं तो खुश थी जब मैंने I remember जब मैंने uh, YouTube करना शुरू किया था मेरे vision board पे था कि भगवान जी बस thirty thousand subscribers दे दो life में इसके आगे कुछ नहीं चाहिए मुझे because I thought that was the extent of becoming a successful YouTuber. Uh, but I never even imagined that these doors would open up for me. I never even imagined that people would be looking at me through a lens. Another thing uh, that I thought was ki because I have this personality that is on online, which is also offline, it's not an act. But I'm just saying that because the way that I am, I'll always get this one kind of role pitched to me. You know, the, the bubbly, the voice of reason, the best friend, you know. I thought that is all that will come to me. But uh, I was really surprised that writers and casting direc directors and directors were actually looking at me and testing me for different things. So it was, it's surreal. I still don't believe that, um, that act th those doors actually opened up for me. Try more for movies. You will do really, really great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate Thanks. that. Thank you so much. I believe uh, you had a question. My question was similar to his actually, but I take <laughs> it forward. So we're seeing you in movies and series also. and. We've always known you as a YouTuber. What do you enjoy more? Like, are you? Do you love doing the series and movies more, or you love being the YouTuber that you've always been? 
Ah, it's so strange to pick because they're both so different. Like what I love about being a YouTuber is that I'm in control of everything. Like I will write, I will shoot, I will edit, I will have a say in everything. So I remember the first time I was on set, I was so uncomfortable because all I had to do was get into hair and makeup, know my lines, go on my mark, say my dialogue and then cut. And then I don't get to see what I shot or I don't know how the edit is happening or I don't know when it's coming out. Also, saath din shoot karke, phir ek saal ke baad aath episode aate hain. Ye toh mere samajh hi nahi aara tha pehle. Kya baat kar raha ho, itte din mein toh, like in 60 days I'll shoot 60 episodes uploaded every day. So that whole dysmorphia of content in, content creation in my head was tough, but it was only tough for I think the first one week because as much as I love being a YouTuber, that's a lot of fun. It's also a lot of fun to be an actor because uh, um, I thought that I enjoy acting because I write the characters, but then I started performing characters that I've not written and that's a whole new space. It's very exciting. I've also been very fortunate to work with people who are great at what they do. So it's a learning curve, uh, but I can't choose. I really can't. <laughs> sure. Do we have any further questions? Maybe one. That's about it. Yeah. I think the front rows have taken all the limelight here. All right. Hello. Not at all. I definitely can't hear. No. no. Yeah. Hi. There yeah. We yes. We love you. I love you personally. Thank first you. First of all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so I think I wanted to ask this question to you. It's completely on your fiona no answer or not, but uh, what do you think now that we all know that the blue tick on Instagram, we all can buy it, right? So how do you feel as a creator? I just wanted to know your opinion on that. Will you be disappointed if I say that I haven't really given it a thought? And I'm not trying to dodge it because I could always tell you, no, no, I don't want to answer. I've, uh, I've really not given it a thought. So it doesn't affect you because Joji is apne earn ki hui hai, malab, the blue tick, right? You got it verified. Wo abhi paiso se bikri hai, right? So how do you feel about what to do? Oh, I see as grateful as I am for the position that I am in right now, it's the same thing. You know I earned it. So I don't really have to go out saying, but like, I earned it and you did. I mean, it's fine. Whatever floats the boat. It's really funny when I see all these comments of paid promotion with hmm. yeah. ticks and I'm just like, okay, that's where we are right now. All right. <laughs> yeah. I've, I, it doesn't bother me, honestly. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I, and I know that I've said uh, a lot of the front rows have had the limelight. I think there's one more lady out there. She's okay. been really earning uh, for the questions. So I think we should give her an opportunity. Sorry, these lights are into my eyes. I cannot <laughs> see anybody. Hi, Prajita. Hello. Uh, Tanvi Parjure here. Hi, Tanvi. Uh, I want to actually understand, since you've been creating content for all these years, okay, you started with a schedule of, you know, three videos per week, then you took a break in between. And I remember watching you coming out and, you know, uh, telling your audience mm -hmm. uh, that I won't be creating content uh, for some time and, uh, you know, you stay with me. I won't be creating uh, comedy content. Comedy yeah. content, yeah, yeah sure. sketches. Yeah. Uh, so I want to understand what is the role that, I mean, as a creator, you've built this community. Now to s for the community to stay with you for so long when you're not giving out the content that they want to see and probably focusing on other things that you, uh, you know, are looking forward to, how difficult is it to you know, keep that community engaged? Uh, or, you know, because today, the, like you know, we were discussing in the earlier uh, you know, panel discussions also, the patient's level, uh, levels are low. They want instant content. They yeah. want to see more of you because yeah. they are your fans. Yeah. So, um, you know, still having those comments saying, okay, okay, P, <laughs> <laughs> good job, okay, whatever you're doing, we'll wait for you. How, um, how, are you, how are you managing to do that? A, so much credit to my audience. And I've said this all the time. I have the best audience. If I have, I'm, 
as much as i am up for trying new things i'm not very gutsy okay main bahut fattu hu meri bilkul himmat nahi hogi kuch bhi naya karne ki and i think the only reason i can do this is because my audience has always shown faith in me at the highs <laughs> i was going to say at the holes <laughs> at the highs and the lows um सो so, उनके ही भरोसे पे आई इवन हैड द गट्स टू से कि यू नो आई वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड मोर टाइम राइटिंग डिफरेंट कॉन्टेंट एंड आई हैव स्पेंड द लास्ट वन ईयर डूइंग दैट सो इट वॉज वेरी स्केरी बिकॉज ऑल्सो आई कैप थिंकिंग दैट वॉट इफ आई जस्ट फॉल आउट ऑफ हैबिट ऑफ क्रिएटिंग कॉन्टेंट लाइक वॉट इफ आई जस्ट बिकम टू कम्फर्टेबल विथ सिटिंग एट होम एंड राइटिंग एंड दैट्स ऑल आई एम डूइंग एंड यू नो आई एम गोइंग अवे फॉर टू थ्री मंथ शूटिंग समथिंग एंड देन आई एम बैक एंड वॉट डू आई डू फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ द ईयर माई एंगेजमेंट माई ब्रांड्स लाइक वॉट एम आई हाउ एम आई गोन सेल एंड हाउ एम गोन कीप मेकिंग मनी बट स्लोली एंड स्टेडिली आई थिंक द फैक्ट दैट आई डेंट कम्प्लीटली डिसअपियर सो आई स्टॉप मेकिंग कॉमेडी कॉन्टेंट बिकॉज आई वॉन्टेड टू स्पेंड मोर टाइम इन राइटिंग आई वॉज स्टिल अपलोडिंग uh my other videos from time to time i was still trying to see opportunities where good content could be created good conversations could be made and then put out um and my audience was enjoying it and they quite liked it at the same time i was uploading shorts and reels uh because i was creating short form content and that has been on for the past year that didn't stop so i think the whole i've not been out of sight i think that helped hopefully yes I Thank you. Any any feedback no, no. that we? Uh, I'm Just so sorry. I I might okay. have to cut in because uh, maybe you were the one who commented saying, "Okay, P, <laughs> we are with you." All right. Can I just get the last part of the? Um, I'm sorry. It's just. I'm sorry. I'll make it up. I will. No, no. You I don't have to make it. Up, but anyways, uh, a quick one. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yes, and uh, you're also working on your book now, right? Yes. This. See, <laughs> I knew we had to talk about this. Good. Yes. Yeah, let's talk so about that, please. Uh, Yes so the kind of feedback you're getting on that if tomorrow a brand approaches you saying that how about doing an integration there will you be oh. up for it She's so happy getting that question all right But it's a tough one now what to say how to answer <laughs> Uh maybe once it's done writing then maybe i can look at how i can do collabs because that will also be hmm. more effective and in a familiar space of how i know i can sell brands because this is my first book i don't know how to integrate a brand into this new piece of content i'm working on so maybe i'll learn on the job if i end up writing more but uh, maybe once it's done yeah may i intervene now yeah. yes now you may <laughs> yes i guess uh, neeta would you like to say yes, something yes. yes so project i was worried about not a single hand going Anjali. up i think they can spend an entire day with you oh yeah yeah 100% <laughs> so <no. laughs> So let's give uh, Prajapta a big big round of applause. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. Thank you everybody.